Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. Today's lesson is on CSEC English A. We will be focusing on equivalent sentences. And I am Ardeen Reed Virtue. I am glad to have you in class with me today. And as said, we're going to look at equivalent sentences. Now, the other night when there was a clash happening between Beanie Man and Bounty Killer, I'm sure some of you were up watching it. Speak the truth and speak it ever. You know what I was doing? Preparing this lesson for you. But because I know that some of you enjoyed the clash, I'm going to tell you the objectives for today's lesson in a clash style. You ready for this? All right. Zum zigonna go, zim zim mama ma, zim zim mama ma. Hey yo, yellow, you don't know. It's Mrs. Reed Virtue on TVJ School's Not Out. Yo, and the first objective is, uh-huh, explain meaning conveyed through word choice and grammar. Yeah, get that from the C-Sex syllabus. Yellow, zima. Second objective is identify elements of constructions that alter the meaning of original sentence. Listen to me. Third objective, make accurate selections of equivalent sentence. Zim, 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 zim. Hey, yo, yellow, Mrs. Reed Verti, out. All right, oh, no, calm down now. <laughs> I hope you paid attention to those objectives. So we are going to look at equivalent sentences. We are going to try to paraphrase the original sentences. We are going to determine which ones are considered equivalent ideas for original sentences. And we're also going to justify why some options would not suit as the correct responses. Now, when you hear the term equivalent, what exactly comes to your mind? There are some persons who might think of the word similar. There are others of you who might think, you know, parallel meaning on the right track. Another idea is something that is comparable. And what else? Here comes the math student who might be thinking outside of the box or thinking within the context of mathematics and says, Miss, when I hear equal, when I hear equivalent, the word equal comes to mind, meaning two ideas that are the same, they are similar, parallel, comparable. Get that? All right. No. To further prepare your brains for this lesson, we're going to do an introductory activity. And your task is, you're going to examine the following pictures to identify the idea that is similar to all of them. So if you're familiar with the game called Four Picks One Word, that is what we are going to do. So look at the picture. We have four pictures here. What is the idea that is common to all pictures? A clue? A five-letter word. Hmm. What do you think? Which picture does your eye look at first? This, the sign, if you know it, and what does it mean? A hint for those of you who are still wondering. The word begins with P. Yes, I'm hearing it. Peace, yeah, man. Peace and love, my brother and my sister. You don't know. This is a sign for peace. And for all the Christians who are on the highway to heaven. Yes, man. We're going to have peace up in heaven. And the dove, which is also a symbol of peace. Let's look at another one. What's the word that is common? We have a scale here. We have some bamboo and some stones by a river with a flower, a woman riding her bicycle, and we have a couple doing tightrope walking. What is the word that is common to all or the idea that is common to all? Let me give you a hint. The word begins with B, seven letter word. This one is easy. Yes, I'm hearing you say, I know that man, that's balance, yes. So when we think about the spiritual and emotional balance, that's what we get from this picture here. And the others are self-explanatory. Final four picks, one word. This one, this one may be tricky. If you aren't scientifically knowledgeable, you might not get this one. What do you think? We have a crib. We have a picture mimicking the manger. We have a telephone off its hook and we have some balls. Now this one may be the one giving you some difficulty. 
It's a six letter word. What could it be? Hint. It begins with the letter C. What do you think? Well, focus on these ones. If you came up with cradle, then you are indeed correct. Because when we think about the crib, you know, cradle for babies, same idea is conveyed through the, ma the manger scene. And this part of the telephone is indeed called a cradle. And for the scientifically knowledgeable, if you're familiar with Newton's cradle bars, then you would know or pick up on the idea. You know, the concept of energy conservation and momentum on oh, no, a well bright. Yes. All right. Now we are going to move on to some guidelines for identifying equivalent sentences. So when you are at the stage of sitting your multiple choice papers, there are some guidelines that you really should follow to help ensure that you select the correct responses. So do not be pencil happy to shade in or button happy to click because you need to ensure you're not operating on impulse but logical thinking and improve and using your language skills to paraphrase original sentences to ensure you understand the original ideas so the first guideline is you should read and interpret the original sentence to ensure you understand what it is saying in fact if you don't know what the original sentence is saying how is it that you're going to transition to the stage of identifying the equivalent sentence? Doesn't it make sense? Perfect sense. Next guideline. Restate or paraphrase the original sentence to ensure you are clear about what it says. So put the original sentence in your own words. That is a part of interpretation. Good? Third guideline note content words that when substituted may change the meaning of the original sentence so when you look at the original sentence you identify some outstanding or main words in it and you begin to preempt what other constructions you might get in the options a b c or d so you prepare your mind for possibilities with regards to how the examiners might have changed the meaning of the sentence be prepared for that by identifying content words for example in the original constructions then we look at another guideline you are to read all the options before making a choice very important do not get to a and a sounds like it and you select a without even knowing what b c or d says you may very well be wrong so ensure you read through all options before selecting what you think is the answer good all right you are also encouraged to identify words, phrases, additional information, number, etc. in the options that do not express a similar meaning to the original sentence. So as you move through the options on the multiple choice paper, begin to justify for yourselves why it is that some options are not considered as equivalent expressions to the original sentences. Justification is key because it helps you to make a definitive decision about what to select as the answer. And I think this is the final guideline here. You are also to use the process of elimination, as I said, as you move through the options. It makes for an easier finishing of the paper. I hope you caught all of that and you're able to remember. Note, we're going to have a repeat of this program so you will get the information then. Now, with all of that said, let us do some practice. And your instructions are, one, you're going to choose sentences that are nearest in meaning to the original ones. And two, you're going to justify why other options are considered incorrect. Yes, like this gift here, you need to exercise your brain, put in some thinking man, build some muscles with the mental capacity that you have. Ready? All right, let's look at the first one. Number one says, 
an interest in their nation's development plan should be displayed by its young people. Let me reread. An interest in the, their nation's development plan should be displayed by its young people. Now is the equivalent sentence A, which says, young people ought to be aware of plans for the purpose of national development. Or is it B, national development is dependent upon the youth. Think about it. I give you a couple seconds for that. Is it young people ought to be aware of plans for the purpose of national development? Or B, national development is dependent upon the youth? If you decide it's A, I'm sorry, you're incorrect. If you said B, oh my God, you're also incorrect. Gotcha. I want to know if you're paying attention. The answer is not there. For all of you who are thinking, oh my God, Mrs. Virtue doesn't know what she's doing. Like, where's the answer? I don't see it. You're bright. You're getting A. Yes, the answer was not there. So let me reread the, the original sentence. An interest in their nation's development plan should be displayed by its young people. The equivalent sentence is, young people should take an interest in plans for national development. I'm feeling all the bright sparks out there, you know. Today we have been discussing CSEC English A equivalent sentences. Now, just before the break, we were looking at an example of a question and we determined that neither A nor B that I gave as the options is the answer. Let us now look to justify why A nor B is the answer. So remember the original sentence says, an interest in their nation's development plan should be displayed by its young people. So young people should show an interest in the nation's or the country's development plan, right? Now let's look at A, the first option. Young people ought to be aware of plans for the purpose of national development. What is in A? that prevents it from being an equivalent sentence. If the word that jumps out of you is aware, then yes, you are on the right track because the, the original sentence requires interest. We could be aware, but not necessarily interested. So it's not an equivalent idea, okay? And let's look at B. National development is dependent on the youth. Now, whilst it is that the original sentence suggests that young people showing an interest in the nation's development plan is important, it does not convey the idea that the national development is dependent on the youth, meaning if they do not play a robust role, if they don't show the interest, then the plan, plans won't be materialized. That is not conveyed in the original sentence. So I hope you see clearly why neither A nor B could work as the equivalent sentence for this one. Now, when you get to this section of your multiple choice paper, remember the guidelines that I shared with you. Note that sometimes a single word at times may throw off the meaning of the sentence. And so we are going to look at different constituents of meaning, different grammatical elements that function as distractors in the options that are given for equivalent sentences. Let us look at our second example. And it says, so engrossed was he in his task that he did not hear his sister enter the room. Now, what does engrossed mean? Meaning he's concentrating, yes, working hard, yes, man. And what happens? Because he's so involved in his work, he didn't hear his sister enter the room. So we're looking out for vocabulary for this one. Is the equivalent sentence A? A says, his sister's entry did not attract at his attention because he was enjoying what he was doing. Is that the equivalent sentence? Or is it B? He was so preoccupied with what he was doing that he was unaware of his sister's entry. 
which one did you choose if you select b yes you are correct we have the synonym engrossed preoccupied right now let's look at a why isn't a the answer his sister's entry did not attract his attention so this part of it is equivalent but let us look at the second part because he was enjoying what he was doing which word throws this off the word enjoying yes we can be concentrating on a task deeply involved in a task but it does not necessarily mean that we are enjoying it so a would be incorrect good now let's look at the third example and for this example we're going to look at subject of the sentence sometimes the subject of the sentence causes some options to be incorrect as equivalent sentence for the original ones so number three says in spite of their size whales are no longer an even match for man let me reread in spite of their size whales are no longer an even match for man now before we get to the options since we are focusing on subject of sentence main idea topic focus what is the subject of the original sentence is it whales or man what do you think focus is on whales all right let us see so is the equivalent sentence for this one a men are no longer a match for whales in spite of their size or is it b although they are large whales can no longer adequately defend themselves against man what is the equivalent sentence in a what's the subject we have men functioning as the subject right in b what's the subject whales does that give you a hint but what the answer is yes man b is the answer you are correct so in a it a is not considered the equivalent sentence because we're not talking about the size of men we're not saying that they aren't a match for whales the focus is on whales and the fact that they are no longer an adequate match for man so the equivalent sentence for three is indeed b let's look at number four and what we're going to look at in this one is tense sometimes the tense of the options cause them to be incorrect as equivalent sentence sentences for original ones so number four says much is being done to develop tourism in our country by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities let us see if we can paraphrase this first much is being done work is being done right projects are being executed plans are undertaken in what sector tourism in order to do what provide good hotel accommodations and facilities provide you know facilities that are welcoming provide tourists with rich and valuable experiences good so that's our paraphrasing now let's look at a to determine if a should be selected as the equivalent sentence a says if we do not provide good hotel accommodation and facilities tourists will not come to our country hmm what about b we are doing a great deal to boost tourism by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities is the equivalent sentence a or is it b read it for yourselves again i give you a couple seconds to think which one is it a or b if you know what conditional tense means then you would know that a is the one that is out right if provisional conditional right it means that something has to happen first in order for something else to follow right it's like a cause and effect relationship being set up here but does the original sentence give us a condition 
or is it stating what is taking place? Let's look at the original sentence again. Much is being done to develop tourism. That tells us that work is underway already, right? They're doing the work already. Yes? Hmm. So A would be out. If we do not provide hotel, provide good hotel accommodation and facilities, tourists will not come to our country. So it is suggesting that in a time to come in the future, if we do not get this right in providing good hotel and accommodation services, then tourists won't come. But that's not the idea being conveyed by the original sentence because the original sentence is in its continuous tense, present continuous tense. It means that work is already happening, is being done. So if you chose B as the answer for the equivalent sentence, then you are correct because we have we are doing a great deal which is synonymous present continuous tense to much is being done do you see it of course you see it man you know you're doing well all over jamaica right now oh all right let's look at number five in some instances the cause and effect relationship that is created in the option is the reason for it being considered incorrect so that's our focus for this one cause and effect relationship number five says the original sentence says if students efforts are rewarded they would be encouraged to work harder let me reread if students efforts are rewarded they would be encouraged to work harder hmm Remember, we're focusing on cause and effect now. Have you identified the cause in the original sentence? And have you seen the effect? What will happen first and what will happen second? Keep that in mind. Is the equivalent sentence A? If students work harder, they will be praised for their effort. Mm. What is the cause in this one? Students' hard work would result in their getting praise. Hmm. Is this the equivalent sentence? Does it carry the same cause and effect relationship as the original one? Hmm. Let's look at B. If students are praised for their efforts, they will usually work harder. What's the cause in B? And what's the effect? All right, let's go back to the original. In the original, we have cause being students are rewarded, right? They are praised, they are lauded for their efforts, they are motivated, yes? So if they get the praises, then the effect or the result is they will work harder. So what is the equivalent sentence for five? Is it A or B? If you chose A, then, oh my God, you're incorrect. I'm sorry. I even have the sound effect for that. A is incorrect because look at it. We have the cause being students working harder and that's not what we start with, right? So the correct answer is B, students receiving praises and then they work harder. I hope you got that. All right, let us look at another one. Number six, sometimes the element or factor that causes options to be incorrect is the number, the idea of how many that is included in the options. The original sentence for number six says, one of the reasons cited for Manchester City's continued defeat of Arsenal is the absence of young players on Arsenal's team. Let me read that one again for you. One of the reasons cited for Manchester City's continued defeat of Arsenal is the absence of young players on Arsenal's team. Now, let us see if we can understand the original sentence first. Put it in our own words. So, we have two teams here. Manchester City 
and we have Arsenal, yes? And I can feel some of the fans out there getting excited. Yes, calm down and focus. All right. Now, who is whopping who on the field? You don't know. We got the... Yeah, too much style. Man. All right. I need to calm down too. Okay, let me take my own advice. So, we have Manchester City. And they are the ones who are continuously defeating Arsenal. And we get a reason. What's the reason? The absence of young players on Arsenal's team. Yes, so they have they don't have a lot of players. I don't they don't have any young players who would come with the energy and you know the tactical moves and so on. All right. Let's decide what is the equivalent sentence. And I've increased the challenge here. Instead of two options, you now have three. So A says. Arsenal's continued failure against Manchester City is partly attributed to the fact that the Arsenal team lacks young players. So Arsenal continues to fail against Manchester City partly because Arsenal team lacks young players. Do you think that's the equivalent sentence for number six? Does it feel warm? Mm. All right, let us see if we get more heat from B. B says, the absence of young players on Arsenal's team is the main reason for their continued defeat by Manchester. Let's look at B. So yes, we have absence of young players, which the original sentence says, Arsenal team doesn't have young players is the main reason for their continued defeat by Manchester. Now remember that we are looking at the element of number. So we have in the original sentence one of the reasons. So we know we are working with several reasons. But does the original sentence convey the idea that the lack of young players on Arsenal's team is the main reason they are losing against Manchester City? What do you think? Is that an equivalent idea for the original sentence? Hmm, hold your answer in mind. While we look at C. One, of the re one reason sorry, for Manchester City's continued defeat of Arsenal's team is that the Manchester, City's Manchester City players are predominantly young. Still on the business of number. What does predominantly mean? It means the players on the Manchester City team are most, most of them are young. Does the original sentence say that? No. So if you settle a long time on A and say, Miss, come no man, we could just move on, come, we got this. We don't know it's A. Ha! Remember I said, one of the guidelines, you read through all the options before you make a final decision about what to choose. So fine, you realized from the get-go that A is the answer, but we still needed to justify why B and C would be incorrect. So yes, the equivalent sentence is, Arsenal's continued failure against Manchester City is partly, not the main one, right? Partly attributed to the fact that the Arsenal team lacks young players. You're doing very well. Number seven, for this one, we're going to look at the grammar construction of, or the grammar element of conjunction. Sometimes it is the conjunction in the equivalent sentences that cause them or some of them. Let me go again. I'm lapsing. Sometimes it is the grammar element of conjunction that causes some options to be considered incorrect as equivalent sentences for the original ones so let us look at this one number seven says huckstering or higgling as it is called in jamaica is an important female occupation let me go again huckstering you know what huckstering is <laughs> see the word there the synonym or higgling as it is called in Jamaica, is an important female occupation. Now is the equivalent sentence A. Women in Jamaica find both higgling 
and huckstering important occupations. All right. Let's go back to the original one. Is it talking about two jobs or occupations? No. What we have is an alternate name for huckstering, right? So huckstering is also called higglering. However, A is suggesting that we are talking about two jobs because of the coordinating conjunction and so you see that would be out yes a would be uh, incorrect let's look at b the occupation of either higglering or huckstering is important to the female population of jamaica what do you think do you see the conjunction in this sentence what kind of conjunction do we have in b we have either or correlating conjunction if you remember grades seven and eight lessons and consequent to our having the coordinate correlating conjunctions again we have the idea being established that we are thinking about or talking about two jobs so it is suggesting either one or the other and remember we did say that number seven is speaking about one thing that has two names so yes b would also be considered incorrect now let us look at why c then is the correct answer huckstering an important job which women do is called higglering in jamaica right so we have one task huckstering but for those of us who aren't familiar with this term, we also recognize it by the word higglering. So C is the correct answer. Now remember that there are several constructions, grammatical elements, vocabulary items that can cause options to become incorrect. So when you get to this section of the paper, bear these ideas in mind to guide your selections of the correct answers. Now, since we've gone through practice mode, it's time for your test. Do you think you would come to class today and I don't assess you? That's what learning is all about. Come on now. All right, getting to your desks and chairs now. Oh, I had another one. All right, you know what? Let's look at number eight before we get to the text. I got so happy to assess. <laughs> all right, let's look at number eight. For this one, we're looking at the element of omission, meaning something is left out. Hmm? Number eight says, his books are interesting and provocative. His books are interesting and provo provocative. So we have two adjectives here. Interesting, provocative. What does provocative mean anyway? Sparking a conversation or debate or argument. Hmm? Provoke thought, deliberation of an idea. Okay. Is the equivalent sentence A? His books are most exciting. Hmm. Do we see omission here? We have the idea of exciting. We didn't get superlative most in the original sentence, but we have it in this option. So that throws it, throws it off too. Now, interesting and exciting are synonymous ideas, but do we get all the information? No. What about the provocative part? So A is out, right? Good. Now let's look at B. His books tend to make the reader angry. His books tend to make the reader angry. Hmm. Angry. Now you can provoke thought, yes. What does it necessarily make people angry? Not necessarily so. And where's the other idea about the books being interesting? It's not there. Where is it? Well, we have to look somewhere else for it. So B is out. Let's look at C. His books are appealing and stimulate discussion. We have appealing. Is that synonymous to interesting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Stimulate discussion. Could we take that as the meaning for provocative? I think it could work. What do you think? Yes. But before we settle there, let's look at D. Remember, we have to go through all the options. D says, his books are concerned with controversial topics. Concerned with controversial topics convey the meaning of provocative or the idea of provocative. 
And again, the, the, the adjective of interesting is missing. So the element of omission also exists in D. So we are making our final decision that yes, C is the answer because we get appealing for interesting and stimulate discussion for provocative. All right. So add that to your list. The idea of omission, that this could be an element that causes some options to be considered as incorrect ideas or incorrect equivalent sentences. All right. Good. Now, back to the excitement. Test time. Your instruction is... Each sentence is followed by four sentences. Yes, man, real multiple choice paper. You need four options. No. Choose the one nearest. See it there? Big and bold. Nearest in meaning to the original sentence. So sometimes half of the sentence may be correct, but the other half doesn't suit, right? So choose the one that is nearest in meaning. No. As we get ready for the test, please separate yourselves, get into your rows, no copying. I will be watching you. As a matter of fact, I'm watching you right now. You think you're the one watching me? I've got all eyes on you. All right, get your pen and pencils and paper now. Hmm. Number one, the original sentence says, Mary still wanted to marry John even though he lost all his money mary is a noble woman mm? mary still wanted to marry john even though he lost all his money so john doesn't have any money but mary has not changed her mind about wanting to marry him what a wonderful woman mary is now let us see if we can find the equivalent sentence, the sentence that is nearest in meaning to the original one. Is it A, Mary agreed to marry John although he had lost all his money? Hmm. Is it A or is it B, the loss of all John's money did not affect Mary's wish to marry him? What do you think about B? Let us look at C. John's money did not matter to Mary, who still wanted to marry him. Is C the equivalent sentence? Or is it D? Mary intended to marry John, even if he were to lose all his money. Which one do you think? I give you a couple of seconds. Write your answer on your paper. Remember, no copying. If you're a twin and you live at home, separate yourselves. I'm watching you. Is it A, B, C, or D? Let's look at A. Mary agreed to marry John, although he had lost all its money. A is out. Why? Some of you chose A, didn't you? I, I have a feeling you did. The original sentence says, Mary still wanted to. Does it sound as if Mary made a definitive decision to marry John? No, wanted to suggest, yes, she has the wish, but there is no final agreement. And A is saying that Mary agreed. She done got through, called feet, second guessing, wondering if she should continue. Agreement, he says, yes. I know for a fact. So A is out. Let's look at B. The loss of all John's money did not affect Mary's wish to marry him. So we have the idea of her wishing to marry him. Synonymous to still wanted to marry him. All right. If you chose B as the answer, maybe you're correct. You thought I was going to say, yes, you're correct. No, remember I said, go through all the options. Let's look at C. John's money did not matter to Mary, who still wanted to marry him. So the last part is synonymous, still wanted to marry him. But the first part, does the first part throw it off? Yes. It doesn't mean that because John lost his money and Mary still wanted to marry him, that, that John's money does not matter to Mary. That's not conveyed in the original sentence. And D, Mary intended to marry John. 
even if he were to lose all his money. Remember I noted the element of the conditional tense. This is suggesting that John has not yet lost his money. And even if he were to lose his money, Mary would still marry him. That's not what the original sentence says. So if you selected B, the loss of all John's money did not affect Mary's wish to marry him, then you are correct. That is the equivalent sentence. I wonder how many of you got number one correct. All right. Let us look at number two now. The original sentence says, when James returned from New York, his accent changed, although he was there for only three months. James sounds like some of you who by the time you get to Montego Bay or Kingston, you start speaky spoky and nobody can understand a thing. So since John has an, James has an accent, I am going to read the options with an accent. For three months, James changed his accent when he returned from New York. That's A. Is A the equivalent sentence? Hmm. For three months, James changed his accent when he returned from New York. What do you think? All right, before we decide, let's look at B. James changed his accent when he returned from New York because he was only there for three months. So in B, we're getting that. The reason he changed his accent was because he was there for three months. Now look at it carefully to decide if that is what the original sentence is actually saying. Is the original sentence suggesting that the reason James changed his accent is because he was in New York for three months? If you're thinking no, then you are indeed correct because we get although he was there in the original sentence. All right, let us transition to looking at C. C says, Despite being in New York for only three months, James's accent had changed upon his return. So this one is saying, James was in New York for three months. Yes, true to the original sentence. James changed his accent upon return. Is this also true to the original sentence? Take a second to think about it. Or is the equivalent sentence D? James's accent had not changed for three months, although he had returned from New York. So D is suggesting that James returned from New York, but he spent three months in his homeland before he changed his accent. Is this the equivalent idea for Number two, hmm, no, so, I mean, I just dropped out of the accent. No, it's not. So what's the answer? Is it A, for three months, James changed his accent when he returned from New York, or is it B, James changed his accent when he returned from New York because he was only there for three months? Or C, despite being in New York for only three months, James's accent had changed upon return. Yes, 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 yes. Bravo. You did absolutely well. Yes. So the although he was there for three months is synonymous to despite being in New York for three months, right? Oh, 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 oh. So some of you got two out of two. Some of you are at one out of two. And some of you, I think you're at zero. So you need to pay better attention to what I'm teaching to ensure you do well on this test. Nobody's failing under my watch. All right. Let me drop the accent before I bite my tongue. We move on to number three on the test. The budget speech was undoubtedly one of the briefest in the years, in years. So the budget speech was undoubtedly, undeniably, one of the briefest in years. Is the equivalent sentence A? The budget speech was without a doubt, a very brief one. 
All right. So we get the idea of without a doubt and that it was brief. But in three, we get the idea of briefest, meaning it's being compared to others. Hmm? And this A doesn't suggest any comparison. Is it B, the budget speech was among the shortest we have had for a long time? What do you think? Could B work? Or is it C? For a long time, the budget speeches have been too long. Are we focusing on the long budget speeches or this one that is the briefest in years? So you're getting the feeling that C would be out. Let's look at D. This year, the budget speech was better than all the others. What, what do you think? Huh? Right here, we're getting the idea of the quality of the speech, meaning better. But is the original sentence conveying quality? No, it is looking at the length. So, B, the budget speech was among the shortest we have had in a long time. Now, if you got three out of three on the test, that's a hundred percent very good job. And this is where we end for today.